Gather round, boys and girls. Today we're opening our Bibles back up to 1 Samuel and learn how David went from a lowly liar plucking shepherd to king of all of Israel. Last week we learned how David, Dennis the Menace, Goliath to death from a distance and got mistaken for brave. Well, after that, everybody in all of Israel loved him, but nobody loved him more than Saul's son, Jonathan, who was probably gargling his man gravy. But don't worry, boys and girls. As we'll learn later on, David wasn't all the way gay, and he was a top, so God didn't hate him. In fact, quite the opposite. God loved him even more than all the citizens of Israel. All of that made Saul pretty jealous. After all, he was the king, so the people should love him the most. But what could he do? Everybody thought David's shit didn't stink, so if Saul had him killed or something, the people would like him even less. So instead of getting rid of David, Saul decided to show everyone that he wasn't as tough as they thought. So Saul offered David his beautiful daughter Michal for a wife, but only if David could collect a hundred Philistine foreskins. Do you know what a foreskin is, boys and girls? It's a retractable flap of skin on the end of a penis. Now if any of you boys are thinking, hey, I don't have one of those, don't worry. That's because your parents paid somebody to chop it off while you were fully conscious as a baby. So anyway, David set out to collect a hundred chunks of Philistine dick, but as you can imagine, the Philistines didn't want to give David any of their dick. So he had to kill them, cut off their members, toss them in a bag, and carry them around until the end of the day when he had time to slice off just the foreskin. Now, most people would hate running around and randomly killing people just to slice pieces of their dicks off, but David was having so much fun with it that instead of bringing Saul 100 foreskins, he brought 200 and traded the giant bag of necrotic dick flesh for Saul's daughter. Well, that sure didn't make Saul any less suspicious. Now, all the people were singing songs about David being ten times more of a badass than Saul, so the king decided to kill his young rival. But wouldn't you know it, Jonathan warned him, so he was able to escape before Saul showed up. So Jonathan took David to the edge of the kingdom, gave him some food and a rusty trombone, and said goodbye. Well, David decided to hide in a cave, but pretty soon Saul heard a rumor that he was there, so he took a group of people out to murder him for daring to be more beloved. So they set out into the mountainous regions to find David, and while they were looking, Saul had to stop and take his shit. Well, wouldn't you know it, he stepped into David's cave to do his business. So while he was straining, David snuck up on him and cut off a piece of the king's cloak. But Saul was apparently taking such a loud, raunchy shit that he didn't even notice. Then, once he left, David climbed high enough where Saul's whole army could see him, held up the piece of Saul's cloak and yelled, I could have killed you while you were taking a dump, and compared to the way I killed Goliath, that would have been valiant. But I didn't, so please leave me alone. Well, Saul did leave David alone, but not because he wanted to. With the war going strong back home, he had to abandon his plans to murder David and go back and be king some more. So David left to live a life of aimless wandering like the Hulk, afraid he might never see his homeland again. Will David ever inherit his throne? Whatever happened to David's wife? And what the hell did King Saul do with the couple hundred wrinkly fetid rings of Philistine dick? Find out the answer to one of these questions, but not the others, next week on the exciting conclusion of the story of David.